Hi guys, I'm here today at Kimberley Sixth Form College just outside of Bedford where Universal Destinations and Experiences are here showing their first public engagement event for their proposed Universal site here at Bedford which obviously is really exciting. I live about 20 minutes down the road so I thought I'll pop down today and see what's going on. I, I kind of expected it would mainly be the things they've already published online but I think it was a very interesting experience overall and has left me both positive and slightly concerned about the development so I'll take you through everything I sort of learned today and picked up uh, had a couple of conversations with people as well and um, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments about whether you think this is likely to go ahead or not so I'm going to go through my notes I made a, a lot of notes in my phone it didn't feel appropriate to film in there as uh, it, was, it was quite crowded so as expected most of what's been posted online was, was what was being displayed so if you've seen the master document with the, there's a big PDF file that, that contains about 20 pages of their various kind of plans infrastructure structure what they intend to do with transport sustainability all that kind of stuff you can find that online but they did have people there kind of taking you through those boards explaining asking answering questions and that kind of thing as well there was also a presentation by two guys who, whose name i didn't catch because it, it wasn't that loud to be honest but they seemed like they were quite high up within universal they discussed mostly around why they're choosing Bedford as a location. They sort of emphasised its locality in relation to London and Birmingham, the sort of the, the road networks, the rail networks, that kind of thing. They also love the fact that it's a flat bit of land so they don't have to do too much groundwork, which apparently is quite rare for Universal. They made a big focus on the fact that every day a packed train leaves Bedford, goes to London and then comes back empty. And their plan is to fill those trains coming back. Um, so they don't really see the transport side of it obviously there will be some challenges there but they're looking at the ex existing sort of rail network and what how they can utilize that and then look at it more as look we can fill your trains rather than we need your trains to bring people to universal so i can see how they're trying to sell it and i understand that approach to be honest there's also obviously a lot being discussed around the local road networks um train stations so there would be two train stations built one uh wixom's which i understand is potentially already in uh, in construction and they would just kind of take that on and finish that and then there'll be a second station added uh, onto the east-west line as well which would be to the east of the uh, of the construction site uh, they'd also look to put in dedicated direct slip roads from the a421 and upgrades to other nearby roads as well which is obviously what many of the locals want to hear so obviously there's a lot of focus on infrastructure wildlife sustainability economy all the things you kind of expect to hear so just to address some of those points they've discussed how they built many habitats and wildlife dwellings in orlando when they've been building epic universe there's a lot of emphasis on kind of the community efforts and all the things they've done in orlando for example they had a case study uh, discussing the impact of universal in orlando citing the university program sponsored education um, funding local food banks all that kind of thing and that's all sort of things they'll bring over to the UK and to the Bedfordshire area as well. During construction they'll be looking to offer around 20,000 jobs and then once the site opens there'll be 8,000 ongoing staff required. They discussed how they do a lot of voluntary work in the community and they do intend to be here for a long term. They're not like a property developer who's going to turn up, drop a bunch of houses down and then head off to their next development. They're here for the long term, they're going to see this through which I guess you have to do running a theme park because otherwise it'd be a bit rubbish, wouldn't it? So I did also overhear that they do expect to make a decision this year. And I had a chat to a guy called Adam from Universal. So what I'll say is actually, I think Universal were really good in bringing a lot of, you know, they hadn't just hired a bunch of kids from the, uh, from the college here and given them a bunch of lines to say. Like they'd sent over clearly people from prominent positions from, from the United States. Uh, which was good to see. It shows they're taking this seriously. It shows that they actually, when it comes to engaging with the community, they are looking to get that information to their top people and not just pass up the chain through a series of subordinates. So I did speak to a guy called Adam uh, from Universal. He confirmed that there's still a few levels of approval to go. Um, so even if it does get approved by UK government, Universal destinations and experiences would still need to get a multi-billion dollar investment from their owners. So I think we do have to be very conscious that even if this gets all the approval from the UK side, there is still that chance that Comcast could look at it and go, nah, we'll just buy Port Ventura instead. So I think we do have to be prepared for that, that, you know, I think a lot of the negativity has come from people assuming that this is not gonna get through because nothing gets built here in the UK, which there's an argument to be made there. But it's all equally realistic that they could have some real encouraging news from the UK and still decide not to go ahead. I do think they want to do this though. The vibe I got from the room 
is one of excitement. I think there, there was were some concerns about traffic and about transport and that sort of thing, as you'd expect. But the feeling in the room was one of interest, of excitement. Um, I think people want this to happen. And the feeling I got was a universal do too, but they are definitely playing their cards very close to their chest. They are being very careful in what they say. I suppose to not give false hope. And also I suppose that nothing gets leaked that shouldn't do. But it's all been very exciting today. I'm, I'm really pleased they're doing this level of engagement. And I think straight away, this shows the difference between this universal proposition and what London Resort were trying to do. Because there was never this level of engagement within the local community when it came to London Resort. Quite the opposite, in fact. <laughs> so, so it's all very promising. It's all very exciting. I would recommend you go and view the Universal GB website. On there, you have the full PDF breakdown of all the kind of plans that I've talked through today. And there's also a survey on there where you can leave your feedback. And I think this is crucial. If you're someone that does want this to happen, make sure you go and fill that survey in because it, your feedback is gonna be so crucial to helping this sort of project move on. So overall, really exciting, but also reasons to be cautious. But the thought of Universal bringing some of their top level attractions and IPs over here, I mean, it would it would blow everything else we have in the UK out of the water and would change the game, quite frankly. So let me know down below what attractions you'd be excited to see Universal bring over here if they do decide to open. And of course, if you are interested in Universal's insane range of attractions, I have a top five video from Islands of Adventure I did last year. That's up on the screen now. Give that a watch if you'd like to find out more about the sort of the standard that you could expect. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.